Hello, my friends. Welcome to today's interview with the amazing Matt Iskey of One Way Out, whose mission is to end violence against women. Come on inside and prepare to be inspired. Hi, welcome everybody. We're here with Matt Iskey of One Way Out. Hello. Matt, hello, thank you for joining us today. And yeah, thank you for having me, absolutely. I'm so excited to have you here because your mission is something that is so needed right now. I know a little bit about One Way Out, but for anybody who hasn't already met you, can you tell us a little bit about your mission? Yeah, so One Way Out is basically a movement of men and women who are standing together to prevent violence against women. We're working really heavily on the prevention end to provide our youth with the tools and the mindset that they deserve. So we provide personal safety and self-awareness classes to young women in the Girl Scouts of San Diego, Power Unified School District. We serve several different schools and colleges and community centers. We provide men, young men, with mentorships as well. So addressing some of the influences in their life, really giving them the guidance and support they deserve to keep them on a good path and really get them where they want to be. So we provide everything we do for free up front because we just we think the kids deserve this stuff and really just trying to work on the prevention end. That's so beautiful. You know, I have friends who are involved in human trafficking and human rights. And so this fits in so nicely with all of that. Yes. How did you get involved in being such a voice and an active participant in making sure that women and kids yeah. are protected? Yeah, it's, it's super personal to me. Um, as long as I can remember, for whatever reason in my life, I've been really close to women who have been affected by sexual violence or intergender violence. And since I was six years old, I, I've seen the beginning, the during and the after, and I just never knew how to help um, my entire life, just kind of watching and being on the outside, trying to listen, trying to know what to say, but never really knowing how to help. And then I, I started being, a, I guess, an entrepreneur. I, I don't really use that word often, but I built a marketing business back in 2015. It did decently well, and then I just kind of sort of got my feet wet in doing things and really trying to make change. And then 2016, the marketing thing went south, it got kind of fraudulent, and I decided, like, let's see if we can do something to help women and help stop what's happening. So we built, we founded it in July of 2016, and since then, it started as a realistic self-defense, and the women on my team and the people I've been able to work with have just helped me grow so much, and it's grown this thing where we're trying to combat violence against women in a much more complete way, looking at it from a mental, emotional, and physical aspect, not just teaching girls to defend themselves and checking it off the list and going, okay, this is all good because there's so much more to it. And it's just was my way to try to help and put something in the world that I thought needed to be there. And I've been really lucky from the support of people like you, how trying to help spread the word and get me in touch with people and how allow us to really just provide our service. I'm so glad that you said the mental, emotional, and the physical. Yes, because absolutely. I know that a big part of what you do is the physical. You actually teach self-defense. Can yes. you talk a little bit about how you help with the mindset? Absolutely. So, and this is something that's really misunderstood. And I'm so glad you highlighted it because I've been to every single college in Southern California. We go there and I pitch what we do and I say, we provide self-defense. And they look at me and they go, well, we already have that. And it's like, it's, I, I don't think it's working. I don't think that people... First of all, I don't think that people know that they have it, and I don't think that it addresses um, as much of the issue. On average, 85 to 90% of things that happen, as far as sexual violence, generally comes from people who have rapport with each other, Gen generally comes from people who are in a relationship with each other. And I think that we're preparing women to look at this from a, from a standpoint of, it's gonna be the guy in the parking lot, or it's gonna be the guy walking your front door. And it's, we're preparing them for that edge case when generally it's something much, much more personal. So I think that the mental and emotional pieces are just as or more important than the physical practice that we teach. Um, as far as the thought work, which is kind of a term that I'm trying to get going, is we teach with 14 and under. So middle school age girls, we really try to emphasize strength intuition in, in intuition. Um, I think women on average have a much stronger intuition when it comes to danger. If you ask a woman when was the last time she felt like she was unsafe or she feared for her safety. Generally, women will say last week or you know yesterday or today even. If you ask a man, he's gonna say six months ago or that one time when I was in the bar or maybe they're in the military and they were deployed. And I think that we really try to fortify that in women, really get them to trust their intuition and younger girls especially because just getting them to look at their intuition and say, if it feels weird, it is. If you don't feel safe, you're probably not safe. Talk to people that you feel safe with. It's okay to say something. Trust that feeling inside of you because I think so often we push it down and go, oh, but they said it was okay or there, there wasn't actually that bad and we rationalize it. And I'm just really trying to, our team in general is really just trying to get women to look at this and say, trust your intuition. If it's weird, it probably is. So that's where we start with 
at girls that are anywhere from 11 to 14 and then 14 and older, not trying to get them the way that we, not trying to get them to think the way that we think, but just opening some questions and some thought for them and really, really trying to get them to decide what is success to you, well, what you will and won't tolerate, what do you want from a relationship, what makes you happy, and really trying, I, I call it a mental and emotional anchor, so that if things do get weird, if things do get uncertain, then maybe they'll have a chance to come back to this thought and go, I never would have put up with this, or I didn't want this in the first place, why am I dealing with this? And really giving them the strength and know that they can be strong in themselves. And then on the back end, physically, if something does happen, they have those tools physically to know how to respond and get away. A lot of the mindset work that I do is helping people overcome past trauma. Absolutely. And one of the big ingredients in trauma is surprise or shock. Mm -hmm. Yes. It sounds like you're really trying to take the element of surprise out Absolutely. by saying, what are you going to tolerate? What Absolutely. is comfortable for you? So I just want to say, and that is brilliant. <laughs> well, thank you. I, it, like I said, it's, I wish I could take all the credit for it, but I really can't. The women in my life and the women who are on my team have really helped me build this thing from a, an idea that was basic and good, but it's just, it's, built into something that's so much more beautiful now and I think provides so much more support and so much more practicality when it comes to what's actually happening and helping somebody you know just prevent that situation. So that brings up a good question then for anybody who is watching or listening this interview do you have some tools or tricks or practices that they could start utilizing right now just from the comfort of their own home that will help move them forward? Absolutely. I, I really try not to make this dark or scary or anything like that because it doesn't have to be as long as we prepare. And, but just really thinking about those things. I think that what you will and won't tolerate is the most important piece. And it doesn't just apply to relationships. It applies to your work life. It applies to your friendships. It applies to what you'll accept from yourself and what you really want. I think that it, it's so much more. And it, it blew my mind because I was reading a book that just, it was so basic, but it was just happiness. And what is happiness to you? And when we ask that question, it's always like, well, I like Starbucks or chocolate or walked on the beach. And it's like, but no, what really makes you happy? And furthermore, like, where did that come from? Did you just sign on that? Did you really choose that for yourself? Or was it something from your childhood or was it something from your past? And I think that those two things, just you don't have to have the physical self-defense. It's so important. But deciding those things for yourself as far as what you want from your life, what makes you happy, and what you will and won't tolerate from the people in your life, be it your boss or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or anybody in your life really deciding those things I think takes back a lot of that control it allows you to decide for yourself what you want and be not because somebody else told you but because you decided that you want it really helps with the inner work I'm so excited to be chatting here with you today and to be Absolutely, hearing about all of this because your mission is so much aligned with mine and really helping to support people yes and I love what you said about listening to the intuition is there any thought work that goes along with practicing your intuition uh, we have little little rules that we're, that we're working on and little things that we're kind of finding as we talk to more and more people. And one of the girls on my team had a great point, and this is something I'm trying to get across, is as far as intuition and thought work, and people always go, well, how would I know? Because sometimes it feels good, sometimes it doesn't feel good. And she had an amazing point in that if you feel like you can't tell any of your closest friends or something is happening to you, you feel like you can't tell your friends or your family, it's probably something that's not okay. And I think that that's so important because whether it be love or relationships or something that we're dealing with oftentimes we rationalize it and we'll say yeah but it was okay because of this or he didn't really mean it or she didn't really mean it and I think that it's so important just to have these little rules for yourself and that's just one example but if you feel like you can't tell anybody in your life maybe it's good or maybe it's bad but it should be a little red flag for you there's all sorts of little examples like that that we work on because it's easy to get stuck in that the chaos of emotion and, and just when real things are really happening it's, it's so much harder to decipher what you actually want you have any personal stories that you'd be willing to share with us about how intuition or mindset helped you through a tough time? Oh, all sorts. I mean, it really, for me, it's just practical. Um, I'm much more trying to focus on mindfulness. I've meditated for the last five years or so. And I think that I always try to tell people this and they always give me the blank look. Like when they ask, well, what, what, what's your thing? It's like, I journal and I meditate. And I think it's just one of the biggest things because it helped me figure out the inner work. It helped me figure out, figure out the inside. And once I figured out the inside, it was like, I don't want to do this because it's not a part of me. And I always thought that I wanted it. And it's just amazing how once you start to dig, you realize that a lot of what you're made up of is conditioned from other people. A lot of what, you, what you're what you made up of is something you thought you wanted because of something you experienced when you were a kid. And when you start to dig through that and decipher, I'm not that person 
or I want to be this person, it makes a huge difference. Um, for me, it's just practicality. My main question is, what do you want? And I try to detach from my emotions, not in a bad way, but just be able to step back and look at things for a minute and ask myself, what do you want? I mean, I was just emailing you uh, yesterday. My car was totaled earlier in the week. And that was my first reaction was, what do you want from this? And I could look at it and I could say, this is the worst thing ever. I, my car just got totaled. I'm not going to be able to do anything this week because I don't have any transportation, blah, 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 blah. Or I can sit here and go, what do I want from this? And say, okay, well, I'm still going to make things happen. I'm still going to do what I do what I can as far as getting my car right. And I feel like it would be so easy to go down the other path, but really it doesn't get me anywhere. And what I wanted from it was to be able to still do this interview and still be, still be able to run my business and still be able to talk to people and not fall down that trap. And I think that mindfulness and just trying to figure out your emotional reaction to things, honestly, the mindset has been one of the biggest components of me being able to be you know, this guy. <laughs> I love what you said about what do I want in this moment? Yes. What do I want? Because yes. in any moment in our lives, whether our day is going good or bad or takes a turn, we can all just ask ourselves, what do I want? Yes. Yes, absolutely. It sounds, so easy. I, it, it, it sounds so easy, but it's really difficult. I, I think we're by nature, we're incredibly emotional creatures and it's so easy to get caught up in the anger or get caught up in the anxiety or get caught up in the happiness and the elation. And I, it, what's funny is I always believe that there's truth in cliche or that there's truth in a common thread that runs through things. And that idea of what do you want? It was largely inspired by my program and asking people, what do you want from your relationship? Well, let's not just ask what you want from your relationship. Let's ask what you want from your life or what you want from this moment or how you're going to react to this thing. And just applying, it's amazing how those principles apply to all different areas of things that I've experienced and things that other things that other people have experienced. So then my question to you, Matt, is what do you want? When you look at this company that you've created, One yes. Way Out, what is your yes. big vision? Um, I, I think that this type of preparation should be made available to youth across the country. Um, we've been incredibly lucky and fortunate. We've worked really hard to get this established in San Diego. And with each day, we're able to talk to more people. As far as a, this might not be the right time, but as far as a call to your audience, we're always looking for people who are passionate, who are passionate about this issue. I don't really care about physical preparation or if you have martial arts or just passionate about the issue of preventing pain for people. Right now I have more demand than I can handle as far as people who want our service. So <laughs> it might not be the right time to ask, but if there's anybody listening who would be interested, please contact me. I know my contact information will be in part of your channel. Um, but I would just love to see this program be spread to as many that want to accept it. I think it's very possible just because of the response that we've had and how real it is. And honestly, the growth that I've seen people be able to achieve just through some self-work and some physical practice and it makes all the difference and I think it's something our youth deserves. So there's definitely a need for your services. So if somebody wanted to help grow your vision, you could probably use sales and marketing yes, absolutely. Um, team absolutely. members in addition to somebody who can teach the self-defense. Right? Yes, absolutely. I, we, we do a lot of mental and emotional work. We do talks and we do speaking events for young men and for young women. So really, I mean, if somebody, that's why I say if somebody's passionate about this, really, if they're interested, I'm more than happy to take them and bring them on board and work with them. And if they want to be a part of the philosophy, it doesn't, they don't have to be a martial arts practitioner or somebody who can teach self-defense. If you know, if they're passionate about this and they know what they, why they want to be a part of it, it's really all I try to do is my first question. If somebody's going to come on the team is what do you like to do? Like what makes you thrive? Like, do you like to talk to people? Do you not like to talk to people and just kind of fit, fit, fit people in a place where, they know that they can be happy and they can do what they like. And are you a public speaker? Yes. Yeah, I am. I, I'm, it's kind of a, a newfound calling, but people said, well, why don't, you, why don't you do speaking events? And why don't you talk to young men? And it was largely based off of things they saw on my Instagram or things through interviews like this. And it was just sort of an impromptu thing, right? I never really planned to be a public speaker, but I've honestly sort of fallen in love with it. And I, I do do it as regularly as I can. It's, it's, a, it's a great experience, to be honest. And what would one of your main topics be? You said you're speaking to young men, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, last thing we did was Abraxas High School and the Poway Unified School District has a, had a mentorship day for young men where they addressed, they took the men and women and they split them and they gave them both just these incredible volunteer experiences and these incredible support experiences. And my talk was on choices and how, honestly, mindset and how so much of the stuff in our life comes down to what we want from it and how the, our best things can come from our worst things and really just getting, you know, getting young men especially to see that they're not a product 
of the things that have happened to them. They're a product of what they do about it. So most of my stuff is around choice and mindset and really opening people's minds to what they're capable of. That's so powerful. Thank you. I, I'm so excited that you are getting to speak to such young people because mm -hmm. something you say could make the difference. Yeah, it's uh, honestly, it's a little bit scary because people are listening to what I'm saying, <laughs> but um, I, I only mean the best and I'm just speaking from my perspective and, and what I know and what I've done in my life. I really can't speak for anybody else or things that I don't know about, but I'm just trying to be me and tell people about what I've been through. And if they have questions, I'll try to answer the best I can. Absolutely. Do you have any services or classes or anything coming up that you want anybody to know about? Yes, we have. I'm actually meeting with the event manager at Balboa Park tomorrow, and we have something coming for early June. I'm, we're going to be having something with the Girl Scouts. It's going to be a pretty large event, and it's open to the public as well. And if anybody wants more information, there will be all sorts of stuff on the website, and then contact me directly. Um, I, I love to talk to people, and I love to connect. So if there's anything I can help with, please. It'll be early June, Balboa Park, and I'm sure there'll be more coming after that. Okay, and so that brings up another good question. If there are any other organizations that would like to have you come in as a public speaker, they can find yes. all your information in the links yes. provided? Yes, absolutely. I, I love talking to people and I love connecting because honestly, we're just trying to spread this as much as we can. So I'm not trying to make, that was one of the things about us providing it for free as well as I'm not trying to make it about money. I'm not trying to make it about, you know, who can or can't have this because honestly, I think people deserve it. I never wanted to turn somebody away based off of, oh, you don't have the connections, or you don't have the skill set, or you don't have the money to pay. I'm sorry. I honestly think that people deserve this, so please don't be afraid. Don't be shy. I was a very shy kid, and I may not have reached out at one point, but I, I really hope that regardless of being shy or thinking that you have enough, I would love to talk to you. If somebody is listening in on this interview and is thinking, I want to help Matt's business grow. He probably yes. needs some donations. Do you have any yes. kind of Kickstarter program, any kind of financial backing? That no, that's a really good idea. Everything has been funded um, personally by me. I'm just trying to make ends meet and still, you know, help the staff and do everything we do. We do, we just started selling bracelets on our website that support. And what these bracelets do, I don't know if I'm giving them a shot. These are the bracelets. Oh, wonderful. What they do are they, they're called prevention bracelets. And a purchase of two bracelets, they're $6. And two bracelets pays directly for the education of one young man or woman in San Diego to receive our service, whether it be a mentorship or a personal safety class. So the website will be in the link below. It's one way out, spelled out, mep.com. And the, I believe the link goes straight to the bracelets. So if you wanted to support and buy a bracelet, it pays directly for the education of a young man or woman. Um, we can always talk about donations and stuff like that too. I should start a GoFundMe or a, or a Kickstarter. It'd be interesting. Absolutely. So everybody, get your One Way Out bracelets now. Support Matt's vision. Yeah. yeah, they they allow us to provide the service for free, and I think that's one of the biggest things. Is it allows us to go to the schools and say, hey we would love to provide our service here. Can you make it a part of your curriculum? Can we do an after school program? And they ask how much it costs and we get to stay for free because of the sale of these bracelets and the support of everybody. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for spending time. I see that you are at the beautiful beach and yet you are yeah. here hanging out with me. Thank you yeah. so much. And I can't wait to see how One Way Out continues to grow and continues to support so thank many you. young people. Thank you so much. I, I, I can't tell you how much the support means because it goes right back to the kids and it helps me continue to do what we do. So thank you so much. You are so welcome. Matt, have a wonderful day. You too. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.